Today is uh, World Tuberculosis Day. And yes, every year, World Tuberculosis Day, which is also known as TB Day, uh, you know, on the 24th of March, is more of to... Is, is a commemorative day that we need to also raise awareness, public awareness about the devastating health, social and economic consequences of TB. And uh, I mean, we've been talking about it. When you when you talk about TB or tuberculosis, the, the first thing that comes to your mind is, yeah, I mean, is a disease of cough. You cough, ah, a friend of mine would say you cough, ah, and then you, you eventually die. But thanks to science development and evolution, I think we have some remedies that would cure you. But... As a, as, a, as a health practitioner, uh, they would be in, in the best position to also explain further uh, the issue of uh, um, t- tuberculosis. And that's uh, we have uh, today on the show Mr. Hassan Kota. He's a doctor of pharmacy, and uh, he will be talking to us about tuberculosis today and uh, its matters and complications and what have you. Good afternoon and welcome to the African Lady Show, Mr. Hassan, doctor. Hey. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. That is good. And thank you very much uh, for joining us on the show. You're welcome. Great. So today's World Tuberculosis Day, and uh, I mean there are a lot of uh, questions that we would want to ask. I mean plenty of them, but then we have actually selected a few that we would like uh, you to also address for us as a health uh, practitioner. But then, c- quickly, from a layman's perspective, you ask me what t- TB is. All I can tell you is it's a disease for cough. But then, what is TB? Okay. What is tuber- tuberculosis? And uh, also, what are some of the lifestyles uh, that exposes one to the risk of contracting um, uh, TB? Okay. Uh, tuberculosis uh, is caused by bacteria that spread from person to person through microscopic droplets. Okay. Released into the air. Mm. Now, this, this can actually happen... When one with untreated active form of tuberculosis, okay, basically, let's say, coughs, spits, sneezes, even spits, laughs, and also sing as well, sing. Okay. Now, although tuberculosis is contagious, it looks easy, like, to catch, okay? Okay. Now, you are much more likely to get tuberculosis from someone you live with or probably work with. Hmm. Okay, and, 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 and yes, that, that, that's basically how it, it can be. Right, okay. right. But that, could, could you also share with us some of the complications of, of, of TB? Okay, with, with the complications of TB, we have, we have a lot of them, okay, a lot of them. You know, you know uh, it's basically caused as a result of bacteria infection, right. okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, probably it can, it can uh, pass through, let's say, the blood streams, okay? So let's say the spine, that's the spinal cord. So you can uh, some of the complications that you can actually develop is uh, let's say spinal pain. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Someone can also develop let's say joint damage. Mm-hmm. Also, you can also develop uh, let's say uh, inflammation of the uh, meninges. That is the, the the memory that actually covers the brain. Okay. Okay. So it may probably lead to meningitis. Oh. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. other people can also have liver and kidney problems as well as heart disorders as well. Right, right. So, 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 aside, which will also leads me to asking you, aside the cough being one of the more of like the primary symptom, there are other uh, symptoms as well. Is that is that correct? Yes, yes. Apart from yes, we have we have a lot of them, a lot, a lot, a lot of them that basically you can have. Yeah. Okay. So, such as uh, aside okay, so cough, that's, some of the okay, symptoms so, aside the coughing. Okay. So the signs and symptoms we have, let's say, a chest pain. Okay. Also, weight loss is also one of them, mm. and also fatigue, fatigue and fever, okay. chills, and as well as loss of appetite. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Now let's also talk about uh, the prevalence of TB in Africa. Uh, how, how prevalent it is it in Africa? Okay, uh, with, with Africa, uh, the case in Africa, it's it, it's very very serious, and we have uh, let's say a survey that's a, that was actually co- uh, uh, done by who? That's the World Health Organization. Okay. Okay, and, and looking at it, you can see that uh, TB is the ninth leading cause of death worldwide and the leading cause from a single infectious agent, okay, that is ranking above HIV AIDS. Okay, so, so before you proceed, what, what, the single infectious agent, what, what does that mean? Like, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, agents that, are, that can actually cause diseases, okay? Okay. So, you see, I'm saying that... We have a lot of them, okay? HIV, normally what they do is that they do reach some of these 
complications, let's say diabetes and other things, okay? Right. And they realized that uh, uh, TB, that's tuberculosis, is the ninth leading cause of death. Okay. Do you understand? Mm. Aside from the ones that we already have, let's say diabetes, hypertension and stuff. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm. 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 So, so in, in, in Africa, could you pinpoint uh, a, a region that has, you know, most cases of TB uh, on, on the continent? Okay. Okay, so what they did was uh, in, in, in their survey, okay, they realized that that was in 2016. Okay. About 2.5 million people fell ill with TB in an Africa region, accounting for a quarter of the new TB cases worldwide. Okay. Mm. Now, an estimated about uh, 4,700 people died from diseases in the African region. Okay. Okay. So over, let's say, uh, 25% of TB that occur in African region. 25%? And, yes, 25%. Right. Okay. And, and, and I, I think mostly in uh, Nigeria and even South Africa. Okay. Yes. Right. So, yes. So in, in Nigeria. West Africa, of course, Nigeria has more populations than uh, every country in Africa. So we can, we can, we can maybe conclude by saying that there is more cases in the western parts of Africa. And yes, then, yes. Like as as you stated, South Africa. That, that's great. Yes. Now let's also talk about. Uh, you made mention that it's not easy to contract TB unless you're working with someone or you live with a person who has it. So it means that mm -hmm. if 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 there's no if you're not actually close to someone who has the the the, the bacteria or the disease, you would not get it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. so uh, how how do you care for someone who actually has tuberculosis without getting it? Okay, so so with uh, with people that normally like you know in TB it comes in, in different forms. Okay, we have the active form mm -hmm. and we have the the latent form. Okay, or inactive form. Okay. Okay. So what what happens is that you know it's a bacterial infection, mm. and we have two different types of patients. Okay, we have those that we we, we call them uh, let's say immunocompetent and immunocompromised. Okay. okay. So could you? So go, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so when we talk about immunocompetent patient, it's someone whose immune system is very strong. Mm. Okay, so what happens is that uh, with most, uh, most bacterial infection, if you are highly, let's say, immunocompetent, it means your immune system can fight against this infection. Mm. Okay, but normally, those that are immunocompromised, their immune system is down in a way that it can fight against bacterial infection. Mm. You understand? So at the end of the day, these people will end up with contracting it more. Okay. Okay. As compared to the immunocompetent patient. Immunocompetent patient. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, I have my colleagues right here in the studio with me. I believe they have uh, some questions for you as well. So the show is Africa Daily on Africa Global Radio. We are speaking to Hassan Kota, a doctor of pharmacy and uh, marking today being World Tuberculosis Day. As a health practitioner, he's explaining some of the, you know, uh, issues relating to tuberculosis, how you could get it, how you may not be able to get it, and and, and some of the risk factors generally involved. So uh, I have half his here and Epiphania. I would like to start with Hafiz. Hafiz. Mr. Hassan, thank yeah. you very much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, uh, my, my question is simple, actually. Uh, I mean, I read somewhere how, you know, the treatment of tuberculosis uh, is actually a challenge in itself uh, because of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the duration of treatment. Now, I've heard something called DOTS, uh, the acronym D-O-T-S, Directly Observed Treatment Short Course. Uh, I would like, us to, like you to actually give us a cursory understanding of what it is all about. Okay. You can see that uh, what, what, what happened is that uh, most, most of the TB medication, okay, are, uh, have actually uh, developed resistance, okay? Okay. Most, most of the medication that are normally used for TB have actually developed resistance. So what we normally do is that we have some, some kind of treatment regimen that we actually use, okay, in treating tuberculosis, Okay. So we, we have most of the medication that probably, if I'm to mention over here, I don't know if many people have an idea, but we have combination therapy that we do, okay? So we have a particular medication we call this uh, rifampicin, etamutol, and isoniazid, okay? We do that combination that is in this treatment because even though it's a bacterial infection, but you can uh, actually use other, like, a, a treatment method, okay, in order to do that. So basically, we, we use a combination therapy in doing that. Okay, so that's basically it, does it. Oh, okay. So it's it, it has it has nothing to do with uh, the adherence to the treatment. Is that what you say? Yes, yes. All all what we do is that you know it, it's it's a monitoring process. Okay? okay. So once you treat this patient, you you also try as much as possible to to monitor this patient as well. 
okay. okay? Because okay. most people, I don't know whether you know, most of the antibiotics, if you use them continuously, it's, it's, it, it, you end up uh, developing resistance to them, okay? okay? So once we do the treatment, we as well do what we call uh, management. You have to, uh, to monitor the patient as well to see how the patient is actually reacting to treatments. Okay. All right. Is that all we have? Okay. Happy. Hi, Mr. Hassan. Yes, so hi. I, I just wanted to find out if you could throw more light on a drug resistant TV. Because, I mean, so far for 2019, you have about 0 0.5 million people who actually fell ill with drug resistant TB. And I think it's something that most of me, as much as people talk about it, more light is not cast on it. Wow. Okay, that is uh, as, uh, as with, the, with the resistance, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, basically, uh, resistance, when we talk about antibiotic resistance, okay, resistance actually develop. I think in, 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 in most parts of our world, as a result of overuse of the medication. Okay? okay? Yes. You see, some people normally, probably, you see, we have, with the, with the antibiotics, we have different types of antibiotics, okay? We have one that we call, we have uh, uh, the broad spectrum and the narrow spectrum antibiotic, okay? Mm -hmm. When we talk about narrow spectrum antibiotic, that is the antibiotic that is normally, what uh, they are used normally covers just a small amount of, or a small range of what organisms. Once the broad spectrum will cover larger amount of what organism or a lot of organisms. But what we normally do is that in this part of our settings, we don't normally do the testing, the culture and we have a test that we call culture and sensitivity testing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That we basically do in order to isolate a particular organism before we, 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 we administer therapy or we, we start treatment. Okay. So what we normally do is that we, we just administer the, 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 the broad spectrum antibiotics without doing the testing. So at the end of the day, a lot of people end up with developing resistance to most of these medications that we use. So resistance, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. So as a result, we even have, uh, I think, uh, World, uh, World Antibiotic Day, okay, that we normally talk about this use of antibiotic and how physicians are to, to prescribe these antibiotics. Because at the end of the day, they sometimes even prescribe it wrongly, hmm. okay, yeah. which is not supposed to be so. Even sometimes for cough. Cough is not, uh, we don't even, we are not supposed to even use antibiotics for, for, for cough and other things. But we see a lot of people using this amoxicillin and stuff. And I don't know if they, they end up developing what resistance. And also, people also use it to treat livestock. Okay, animals. Yes, some people use antibiotics to treat animals as well, which sometimes, you know, uh, uh, actually leads to this resistance strains of organisms. Okay, so when you were talking, you actually said sometimes you just do the broad spectrum. Why don't yes. you separate the genes like you were, the, organ the microorganisms like you were mentioning? Yes. I, I, at a normal circumstance, that's what they are supposed to do. Okay, they are supposed to isolate or to do the testing in order for them to see a particular antibiotic that they are going to use. Okay? Mm -hmm. But in this part of our world, what they normally do is try and error. That is what they do because they don't know the actual organism that is present because sometimes most of the health, health sectors will be like, oh, it's as a result of, let's say, pressure on them and other things, so they can't run the test. So I don't know, they, they end up giving the medication, but and I know that that's what they are supposed to do. They are supposed to do the testing to know the particular organism or the strain that is involved before they administer the medication, okay? But they don't do that. They just give the broad spectrum, and because it's broad, so definitely it will cover for a wider range of organisms, which normally leads to the resistance okay so that necessarily is not the best practice and i think then the fault then lies with the practitioners the health practitioners yes yes okay yes. so uh last question so i just want to find out here in our base ghana uh so far towards the fight against tb can you tell us some of the things mechanisms or things that have been put in place to ensure that less and less people contract or fall prey to tv to tb Okay, so so what happened is that uh, uh, mostly, okay, when people, you know, I talked about the fact that we have different uh, types, okay, we have the active, people who are active careers and also latent, okay, yeah. those are actually active, okay, they have the organism uh, or they have the, the, uh, the, the TB that is active and they can spread it to, from one person to another, okay, mm -hmm. and those that are latent or inactive, they have it all right, but their immune system can fight against it. So what we normally do is that when someone comes to the hospital settings and they have this TB, okay, after treatment, okay, we, we, we basically advise them, tell them some of the things that they can actually do in order to prevent themselves from spreading this particular uh, 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 disease, 
Okay, but that's the only thing that you will basically help. And at the same time, even in the hospital settings, uh, we, uh, the, doc the doctors, the, the pharmacists, and the nurses, we also have certain measures that we put in place so that we ourselves will not contract that particular disease as well. So we basically advise them so that probably when they also go out, they, they, they can also prevent the spread, okay? Let's say they should, they should basically stay at home and they should also, like, as it wear the marks and also cover their mask when they are talking because it can be spread as a result of droplets, okay? That is water droplets. So we, we, we do some of these things. And also sometimes we do organize, uh, organize uh, seminars and other things in order to basically, uh, like, explain some of these things to them so that people will be aware of how it's been caused, basically. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Happy, and uh, thank you very much, Hafiz, for joining us on uh, the Africa Daily Show and, of course, sharing your knowledge as well with us. And, and lastly, uh, you know, with the presence of COVID and how it has actually overshadowed other important ailments that we're supposed to also look onto, such as, uh, you know, hepatitis, tuberculosis, and all of that. And, and considering tuberculosis and COVID, one of the primary symptoms of COVID is also mild cough. Right, and then to yeah. also also having that uh, cough uh, symptom as well. So how what would you say? How do we manage such a situation? Because sometimes when one uh, starts coughing, and maybe it may not be COVID, but they're actually skeptical about visiting the health facility for checkup. Because when you go there, sometime you may be told, okay, it's COVID, so you move here and everything. So how 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 as a health practitioner would you advise, or how do you think this situation should be managed? Okay. So uh, basically, with, with, with most of the signs and symptoms, you can see uh, the tuberculosis, the signs that I've said, with COVID and other, other complications as well, you can have uh, uh, those symptoms, okay? Right. So I think the, the best thing that needs to be done is, for instance, if you have some of these symptoms and probably you, you are unsure, it's best to go to the hospital to, 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 to do the checkup, okay? okay? For them to test, for them to, to verify. Mm. Because without, let's say, testing and other things, you you end up going probably to the uh, uh, to the pharmacy over to purchase counter, some medication right. over the counter medications that at the end of the day mm. it, it won't even be what you what you are suspecting. So right. I think the best thing mm. we, we, we have to do is, is to go to the hospital for them mm. to run test on us for uh, for them to basically verify whether it's as a result of this or COVID or probably meningitis or whatsoever. Oh, okay. I think that would be the best. Yeah. Sometimes we have this, uh, you know, easy, like uh, fast test kits for maybe malaria, and HIV and what have you. Do we have similar for, for tuberculosis as well? Or you need yeah, to go to a health facility? Yeah, we, yes. I think uh, when, when you go to the health facility, that is when you can, because we have a lot of tests that we normally we, we, you know, we normally run in order to, to, to see sure. some of these things. Okay. Yes. Right, right. We normally okay. do sputum tests that probably they, they, they will take your sputum. Okay. Okay. In order for them to culture you to see if the organism is present for them to not. be able to verify if, right. yes, right. All if right. you have Th any to Thank you very much for joining us on the Africa Daily Show and thanks for your yeah. contribution as well. Okay. Yeah. That uh, was uh, Hassan Kota, your doctor of pharmacy. Of course, sharing his uh, knowledge with us uh, with respect to the issue of um, tuberculosis today being World Tuberculosis Day. All right, let's get back to the studio. Uh, my colleagues are here so they can also uh, share a bit of light uh, in their own findings as well so we can proceed, yeah? Okay, Hafiz and uh, Epi are ready. Let me start with Hafiz. Chief. Charlie. Yeah, had a lot of, uh, you know, submissions right there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, mm. He's cleared up uh, some areas, mm. uh, yes, and... I see, if not for the fact that uh, we're running out of time, mm. uh, there's there's a lot, a lot of questions. Yeah, questions uh, mm -hmm. you could have uh, delved into. Mm. Anyway, but uh, in the last bit of your submission, you wanted to find a correlation. COVID uh, and COVID yeah, and, uh, uh, you know tuberculosis, tuberculosis and everything. Right, right. And there's this uh, data chanced on on the, the uh, on something about it. And according to the UN Health Agency, okay, there's an estimated 1.4 million people. 1.4 million people who lost out on treatment for tuberculosis in the first year of COVID-19. 1.4? Yes. Uh, so with COVID taking center stage and mm. everything surrounding COVID, so we are talking about some 1.4 million people that lost out on treatment. So that's very disturbing. Very? It's very disturbing. Very. Now, in his submission as well, uh, along the way, he mentioned Nigeria and... South that's, Africa. Yes, and uh, they are, you know, occupying some not so flattering positions uh, in terms of the fight against tuberculosis. Mm, and mm. Uh, just to put things into perspective, yeah. uh, Nigeria ranks first in Africa in the number of undetected cases. Okay. 
Yes. That and is Ni- not looking good. Exactly. Now, Nigeria still is Nigeria recorded 15% increase in TB cases notification in 2020. Just last year? Yes. So, Whoa. <sighs> Nigeria the, the, is not there's a problem. There's a problem there. It's, it's, it's there is a problem so, there. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the fight. Mm. But uh, just quickly before we go, uh, mm. you know, remember I talked about dots uh, directly uh-huh. the treatment shots. Mm. Is, is that something I used to see on TV as mm. a kid? Is that something that came up right. where I used to see something like that on TV? It's something I no longer see around. Mm. But it 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 was something that that c- confused me a bit. Mm. You know, when it comes to the administering and adherence to, to, to the treatment. Oh. Because, you know, and most of us are gl- guilty of it. Mm. I mean, you are sick and then you go for the medications. You take it w- once or twice. You are feeling and you're a good little to go. You don't, you don't take the rest. Yes, exactly. that is very true. You yeah, I heard about something with, with in relation <laughs> to tuberculosis also back in the days. Like, exactly. you need to take it Till it finished, like exactly. every, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. yeah. So yeah. that's what DOT is all about. Mm. Directly observe treatment shots, cause so the use of technology to, uh, you know, enforce adherence to, yeah. to you know the treatment. Yeah. So I think that was what he mentioned mm. uh, briefly, mm. but a little bit of detail of it is the fact that you know uh, traditionally they used healthcare workers w- to who monitor, who monitor some yeah. of these things. Yeah. But the downside to that approach is that it's it's uh, in terms of logistics and human resource, it's mm. it's, it's costly. Because right. you're talking transportation to certain areas. Uh-huh. You're talking about, you know, available... Accessibility you know, and all of these things. Yeah. And everything. So yeah. it's quite expensive of mm. putting dots in that regard. But uh, in, in recent times, there's been what we call VDOT. Okay. Which is Video Directly Observed Therapy. Right. Now, what happens is that uh, patients will record videos and send it to their nurses if they take the medication or when they take them. Okay. Instead of having the nurses come and, you know, standing next to you and briefing down your neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I know, right? Exactly. Mm. So what you do is you take the medication and then record yourself and send it. They send it to them. Yes. And, and it's something that was tested in places like USA, Mexico, and Kenya. And Kenya, uh, wow. Yes. So and it worked, actually. Yes. Uh, so mm. we've seen some improvements in that regard mm. anyway. So, mm. But uh, all in all... Uh, mm. That's uh, that's the bits about mm. uh, dots and, and, and one thing I'm happy about TB is that at least there's a cure if 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 it's if it's detected early. Yes, it's know. one of the vaccine preventable diseases. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah. So vaccine preventable, like you yes, take it. Yes, really. Yes, it's one of the sex killer diseases in Ghana. We are right. Yeah, about, so yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, t- taking vaccine early. Mm. So yes, mm. and we we'll also talk about the drugs. But at some point, well, when you become drug resistant, like you mentioned, he mentioned, yeah, it wouldn't uh, work then anymore. It becomes problematic right. because then it becomes difficult to treat, and it's even more expensive when mm. it comes to drug resistant. <laughs> okay, let me hear Epi if you have any top ups to do. Mm-hmm. I think one thing he established, which is a fact, is the fact that in Africa here, South Africa leads when mm. it comes to tuberculosis cases. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria is also following, but South Africa has been doing quite a number of things okay. to actually get the, the number of people that actually contract uh, gets the tuberculosis. Mm. And yes, they've been doing well. But tuberculosis and COVID-19. So interestingly, last year in May, mm. South Africa actually did vaccinate hundreds of health workers with a hundred year old TB vaccine. Now, it's something, it's a BCG, and this was something that was originated A hundred-year-old vaccine. Yeah, it was, uh, it was made a hundred years, years ago, ago in Francis Institute, Pasteur. Okay. Yes, and that's what they use for newborn babies against the tuberculosis when right. they are born. Mm. They give it to them. Mm. So they thought it actually also fights against respiratory tract infections, mm-hmm. and they were hoping that probably if you take it not just once, but twice, okay. it could better... Uh, keep your system Mm -hmm. against the COVID-19. So they actually did vaccinate uh, 250 health workers. Okay. With the immunization, and how did that uh, turn out? <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did it? Did it make any difference? No, it didn't make it a difference. Unfortunately, <laughs> but that's a good try, though. It, okay. did, it didn't make a difference, mm. but I think it's a good thing that they're working on. It's a good oh, thing yeah. they've been doing. Yeah. yeah. And they've they've actually used with the implementation of the dots, like mm-hmm. Hafiz said. Yeah. They've actually been able to fight quite a number of them. Now, yeah. Africa generally, I mean, with implementation of dots and also the stop TB strategy, okay. yeah. uh, which was put mm-hmm. together by member states, has resulted in an estimated 10.1 million lives being saved in the whole Africa region. Nice. 
Okay. Yeah, so I, th- I think we're doing we're, well. We're, yeah. We're, we're doing we're, we're doing very yeah, well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But we, we really well. need to hear more I sensitization mean, and awareness, you know, oh, yeah. creation and everything. Out of out of the estimated three million tuberculosis cases, I right. mean globally, mm-hmm. uh, Africa just accounts not just but that's quite a number. We account for forty four percent of it. Right. So forty four. Right, right, right. Okay, so 56 is outside the continents yeah. that spread around the place. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, they are distributed even. Yes, yes. <laughs> right, the show is Africa Daily on Africa Global Radio.